what it is to feel vulnerable. Storms do it for some people. My dad had a couple of storm scares. One was a tornado when he was a teenager up camping, and a tree fell. And as he told the story, it came within inches of him. And then when he was on a ship in the Pacific during World War II, there was a typhoon. And so growing up with dad, we kids knew that he was always jumpy around storms. So that if there was a tornado warning when he was home, we'd all have to go down to the basement. We'd have to sit there until it was over. Maybe we could play crazy eggs, but <laughs> Dad would be, keep, be keeping an ear on the radio, waiting for updates. This past week, I heard the tornado warning siren, and I could not be bothered. <laughs> I'd had my second dose of the Shingrix vaccine the day, the day before, and I was just feeling too crummy for the basement or even to get away from windows. My vulnerability was my stupid immune system. Maybe you know that vulnerability when you're driving in iffy weather and someone changes lanes right in front of you and you're like shaking just how close it was. Or you get one of those medical diagnoses, the kind that sends you off for further tests, and you don't know what kind of future you're facing. Or maybe you just keep on checking those retirement accounts and it's as if more and more of your future is evaporating. Or suddenly, you're aware of just how shaky our political system is how little you trust the rest of the voters in this state, or the rest of the states. Or you hear the leader of a nuclear-armed nation making noises about all options. Sometimes we know we're vulnerable. And sometimes we are so stuck in our day-to-day -day lives that we forget. And we need a little jump start to remind us of just how precarious our lives are. That's the Jewish holiday of Sukkot, the jumpstart, the alert, the reminder to people whose lives feel settled and secure. They are really quite precarious. I'm grateful to Jennifer for today's liturgy for pointing us toward that holiday. If you were observing Sukkot, you might build a leafy shelter in your backyard. You'd spend time in it, eat meals in it, and you'd look up and you'd see the stars because you're supposed to build it flimsily enough that you can see the stars through the roof. And you'd be reminding yourself, this is what it was like for the ancestors when they were living their nomadic wilderness lives. This vulnerability, this precariousness, this is true for all of us wherever we live. This is part of being human. It's a striking thing, if you're thinking those Sukkot thoughts and recognizing vulnerability, to hear today's Gospel reading because Jesus refocuses the sense of vulnerability. He's talking about being vulnerable to defilement. A question in his culture was, how can I keep myself pure? And the answer for a lot of them was, keep yourself apart from the contaminants around you. Don't go into the wrong spaces, don't associate with the wrong people, don't eat the wrong foods. Get some of that in our culture today, too, I think. If you can keep yourself from touching or eating anything impure, then you can become impure yourself, right? what is outside us, what can really make us less than pure, less than whole, comes from the human heart. And when he mentions things like murder and theft and sexual misbehavior and slander, he's talking about them not as things that might happen to us, but the things that might come out of us. Well, what if? What if the things that might happen to us do not diminish us? What if the things 
that make us less are the things that come out of us, out of who we are. What if we are not diminished by the people who don't vote the way we think is right, but by our own demonization of them? What if a stupid driver doesn't harm you as much as your own road rage response? Jesus, it is so. Oh. 